Hey everyone, this is a compilation video where diverse community members from all walks of life are coming to share amazing and inspiring positive climate actions that they've done in 2022. I learned a lot from these examples, so I hope you do too. This is the first compilation video of its kind and I'll be doing more in the future, so stay tuned. And with that, let's begin. So, in 2022, I was able to engage another hundreds of Brazilians that, just like me, want to create a more sustainable world. And we did it by spreading climate education with courses, webinars, events, and a lot of scientists. Beyond that, I was an active member organizing two climate conferences. The first one was the local conference of the youth, El Coy, that represented Brazilian on COP27. And also the first conference year for sustainable development campaigns that create a recommendatory letter for the governments of my region. Then I wish you all of us a wonderful and more sustainable world in 2023. So kisses from Brazil. Over the past year I've finished my honors in modeling the beaching of ocean microplastic and that has acted as the capstone project for my uh, bachelor's in maths and data science. And it's just been a super transformative year for me. And I've realized that I do in fact want to pursue a climate career. And I look forward to uh, 2023 and getting as involved in as I can in uh, both the uh, online and local climate community, as well as continuing to do work that I uh, truly believe in, in climate data science. In 2022, I am really blessed to have been introduced to the world of captive rearing. Captive rearing is basically a conservation method in which we take juveniles, in my case, um, juvenile snails, and we um, care for them in captivity so that we can maximize their reproduction, we can see their populations grow in hopes to reintroduce them back into their natural environment. Now, I work in, or I work on Oahu, Hawaii, and we have um, a lot of endangered snails. And so I work with some of the rarest snails in the world, um, captively rearing them so that we can release those populations back into to the forest and we can have those native populations back on the trees, back on the ground. Um, and it's one of the most inspiring things I've gotten a chance to do. I absolutely love doing it and it's opened my eyes to how much humans can do when it comes to conservation. Um, and not just people with my experience, but pretty much anyone can volunteer and do this type of work. Hey y'all, it's Becky here from the Becca Sphere, which is a fellow climate YouTube channel. and. Stuff that I did in 2022 that I'm proud of for climate action is I expanded which uh, platforms I talked about climate change on. So now I also talk about it on my podcast and also on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitch, which has been really fun to learn different ways to communicate it. So that's probably the biggest climate action thing that I have done this uh, this year. Hello, my name is Greg Bailey, and the climate action that I feel the most proud of is providing the conceptual and the physical space for my students to make sculpture and furniture out of found, repurposed, and reclaimed materials. Uh, and we do this in my two classes, the Making Maker and Sculpture for a Small Planet. You know, typically in a college level sculpture class, uh, students go out and they purchase their materials. Um, they come back and they make something and even though it might be pretty cool, they end up throwing it away in the end because they don't want it. So I asked my students to reframe the social constructions around value and note the intrinsic value of the materials themselves and to try to make things that they actually want. I believe that teaching my students this aesthetic of anti-waste actually will have a lasting um, contribution to the climate cause. Make sculptures for a small planet. Thanks. Hey everyone, this is Jackson Tolbert with Energy Alabama. This past fall, I had the opportunity to do some research for a fantastic project called Energy Democracy Y'all. This was a collaborative project with some really great nonprofits, including Appalachian Voices and the Partnership for Southern Equity. Our teams came together to research governance and service data for rural electric co-ops across the Southeast. If you don't know what co-ops are, they are essentially nonprofit electric utilities that service much of rural USA. 
What we found after gathering Alabama's data is that our co-ops have the lowest service and governance scores of any state surveyed. These low scores were primarily due to things like a lack of democratic processes, high fixed fees on bills, and a lack of community solar across the board. All of these things work against decreasing emissions, and it hurts their members. It is essential for co-ops to quickly rectify these issues, and they can do so with the help of the Inflation Reduction Act, which provides $9.7 billion in direct pay funding to rural co-ops. For more info about the project, check out energydemocracyyall.org. Hi, I'm Daniel Tate, Executive Director of Energy Alabama, and in under one minute, I want to share some good news about the work that we've been doing over the past year. First and foremost, we won a Department of Energy grant uh, as part of the Alabama Energy Transformation Initiative, where we're going to be working with the University of Alabama to train and educate students and prepare them for the clean energy practices and career opportunities coming forward that are only going to explode even more with the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. Second, we got to hire some awesome team members. Cherie Martin, our Deputy Director, Laurel Holmes, our Education Manager, Jackson Tolbert joined us as an intern in 2022, and they have been cranking out amazing work. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, after almost two years of work, unfortunately a little too long, but we were able to get it done along with many of our partners across the Southeast. We now have a slate of six new board members for the Tennessee Valley Authority, one of the major producers of electricity in the seven state region of the South. And we're hopeful that they will take their job seriously. Uh, and with the clean energy transformation, uh, energy burden and energy costs of getting that lower and more affordable for people across the Valley. So stay tuned for more work on that front. So my main climate action for 2022 was starting a climate job. Now I work for a startup called Climate Engine as a geospatial data scientist, and we work with the financial sector to enable and finance climate adaptation and mitigation. We achieve this by creating platforms using satellite data, which enable financial decisions that drive sustainability and climate resilience. For more information on how we work, visit climateengine.com. Now, if you're interested in how to engage in local climate action, I have a special video for you and it's called how to convert climate anxiety into climate action. So make sure to watch this because it has specific tips and resources along with a mental framework for climate action that you don't want to miss. So check out this video, watch it fully and stay tuned, subscribe below, comment below, and I will see you soon. Happy 2023.